discussion. <laughs> I haven't heard of those games. Okay, welcome to uh, Worksheet 5. We're talking about first and second declension adjectives, so people in the chat, feel free to uh, contribute, chat it up, right? Hopefully stuff on, uh, on topic. Um, so everyone has already had the lesson on first and second declension adjectives. I've heard of Fortnite. I don't know about Warzone, though. <laughs> What's a Fortnite? It's 14 days. What's up, Johnny? All right, so we said uh, in class that there are two groups of adjectives, right? First and second declension, that's one group. Those are your us, a, um kind of adjectives. Hey, hey, Susan. Um, third declension adjectives are the other group, and we'll, we'll spend some time with them another day. When you look at a first and second declension adjective, it always has three forms. It's always the masculine form, feminine form, and the neuter form in that order. Sweet. Okay. Um, big thing we've talked about is, of course, adjectives agree with the nouns they modify in gender, number, and case. Let me make sure I got that right, Miss Bauer kids. Adjectives agree with the nouns they modify in gender, number, and case. We got it, right? Perfect score. Uh, and then my little addition here, regardless of declension, right? Which is why, as we said in class, they don't have to have the same ending. And very often they won't have the same ending, but that's okay. Um, they use the same endings as first and second declension nouns. Easy money, but again, taco grande, any adjective can modify any noun. Just want to say that a thousand times. Uh, and as I said in class, they're often referred to as us, a, um adjectives because of the way they look. Some of them are us, a, um, some of them are er, a, um. Just a little, little different. So we start with these um, noun adjective pairs. Okay, a couple different ways that you can tackle these. One way, the safe way, is just to start with the noun, right? The noun is werbum, werbi, neuter, right? You never get the first two forms wrong. The nominative singular, werbum, the genitive singular, werbi, because those are the forms that are given to you, okay? So you don't want to mess those up, okay? Now you could go one of two ways, right? You can go noun first and just take care of the noun. So think about what declension, where boom, where be would be. That's second declension. So where boom, where be, where bow, where boom, where bow. Careful, 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 because it's neuter. Where ba, where borum, where bees, where ba, where bees. So you can always just do the noun, get the noun out of the way, okay? Once you tackle the adjective, the first thing you have to figure out is which of these three forms am I going to use? Am I using malus, am I using mala, or am I using malum? And of course, the key is what gender is the noun? The noun is neuter, so of these three forms, we gotta use malum. Malum is second declension because this is a first and second declension adjective. So by definition, this word only uses second declension neuter endings. Well, so does my noun. So malum, mali, oops, malo, malum, my typing is horrible right now, and malo, and the neuter here, mala, malorum, malis. Mala, malis. So because the noun is second neuter and the adjective is second neuter, they will have the same endings. Life is good. Okay, and that will happen. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Okay? Just don't forget about the neuter uh, plural forms. Mala, werba, mala, werba. Okay? Our dinner. So we start with our noun, which is cana, canai. Cana, canai. Uh, it is a first declension noun, so we just go to town. We don't even have to think. We're on autopilot. Canam, cana, canai, canarum, canis, canas, canis. Ooh, my typing today. Woo! Now we tackle the adjective. So no stare, no stra, or no strum. Well, my noun is feminine, so we're gonna use no stra. No stra is by definition a first declension adjective. 
So nostra, nostri, nostri, nostrum, nostra, nostri, nostrarum, nostris, nostras, nostris. First declension noun, cana. First declension adjective, because it's the feminine form, nostra, nostra cana, cana nostra, all um, have the same endings. And life is good. But of course, there will be some weirdos. So looking at a word like great farmer, a phrase like great farmer, we have agricola, agricolae, which is masculine, keep that in mind, but it's still first declension. So we still use our first declension endings on it. Agricola, agricolae, agricolae, agricolam, agricola, and then in the plural, agricolae, agricolarum. I think I just need to move my keyboard a little bit. There we go. Let's go. Agricolis, agricolas, agricolis. Okay, easy money. Now, magnus, magna, or magnum, it's all about the gender. So since farmer is masculine, I need to use magnus, okay? And magnus, that masculine form, is second declension. So magnus, magni, oof, oof. Moving the keyboard did not help. Magnum, magno, magni, magnorum, magnis, Magnus, Magnis, okay? So you look at those two next to each other, they are of different declensions, which means they're gonna have different endings, not completely off the wall different endings, but they're a different declension. You'll see some similarities, right? Magnum, Agricolam, Magno, Agricola, Orum, Arum, Is, Is, Os, As, Is, Is, um, yeah, I'm going to leave this up here for, uh, for a little, a little bit. Okay. Um, but remember too, you can rewind even on a live video, you can rewind. So I think, can you rewind on a stream? I think if you've been watching, it allows you to pause and then pick up. Uh, so feel free to pause if you need to as well. Um, so this is our first example of a noun and an adjective having two different, um, endings, right? Two different declensions. But that's okay, right? Obviously, in class right now, we've only been dealing with first and second declension everything. So the most exotic, you know, pairing we're going to have is like a first declension masculine noun or a second declension feminine noun, right? There aren't too many um, possible combinations. But once we start throwing third declension, fourth declension, fifth declension in there, we'll have some more exciting combinations. But for now, that's pretty much the most exciting combination we're going to have. Okay. Tegan, is this making sense? Any questions? I know I can type a little bit faster than you guys can write. I'm cheating a little bit. You let me know, okay? Hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, long road. <laughs> yeah. I can type faster than you guys can write. It all makes sense, so that's the most important thing. Okay. Uh, so the long road, we have our noun wea. Wea. Genitive wea. <laughs> it's good for you. Uh, this is a first declension noun. We I it's a nice short one too. You're welcome. Less writing. We um we uh we I we are um we is don't be afraid of that double I we us and we is okay. So first clench noun easy money short one too and our uh 
adjective, we got longus, longa, longum. So because the road is feminine, because road is feminine, we use longa. Longa is a first declension adjective. So it's going to use the same endings. Longa, long guy, long guy, long gum, long ga. Long guy, long garum, long geese, long gas, long geese. You gotta hydrate, guys. Always, always hydrate. Give you guys a moment to catch up on that. We've got plenty of time. We're only 10 minutes in. Whew. All right, and our last pair we have a small fig tree. Okay, so my noun is ficus, fiki. So ficus, fiki. It is a second declension noun because it is fiki in the genitive. Fico, ficum, fico, fiki, ficorum, fikis. Ficos, fikis. Don't be fooled or don't let it distract you that it just happens to be feminine. That does not affect the declension whatsoever. It's still a second declension noun. Ficos, fiki, fico, ficom, fico, fiki, ficorum, fikis, ficos, fikis. This page is not too long. <laughs> Now, where this feminine thing is going to come into play is when we're deciding which of these adjectives we're going to use. So par was, par wa, par wum, because ficus is feminine, we use par wa. Par wa, by definition, is first declension. The feminine form uses first declension endings. So par wa, par wai, par wai, par wam, par wa. And in the plural, Parwai, parwarum, parwis, parwas, parwis. So this is kind of the inverse of the like altus agricola or malus agricola kind of a situation where instead of having a first declension masculine, we have a second declension feminine. So you kind of get the same ending pattern. It's just we've got the second declension noun uh, with the first declension adjective. Key is always, always, always gender, right? You decide between these three based on what gender the noun is. And then these come built in with their own endings. Parwus always uses second declension endings. Parwa always uses first. Parwum uses second neuter. And that's going to bring us to our first uh, sentence translation. Okay, these are pretty straightforward. And obviously, we haven't reviewed all the different case uses yet. So some of this might be new for you guys. But when we are translating sentences, we want to label as much as we can. Labeling is essentially the showing your work of translation. Okay, so sometimes labeling can be just as simple as what case is that word in? Okay, so for instance, to Tom with that am on the end, is definitely in the accusative case. Teram is definitely in the accusative case. They are going together. It's a noun and an adjective, which means they have to agree. We dare, if you remember our conversation last week about the verb pulsum, pulsum likes to hang out with an infinitive. It likes to have that to verb form next to it. And then when it comes to verbs, the most important thing to identify is who's the subject. So possumus, because it's sumus, 
in grammar speak, we call that first person plural, and that is present tense, okay? Now that we've identified what all of these words are and what forms they are, notice what I haven't talked about yet is what they mean, because honestly, that's not as important, right? It's more important to understand how they are all fitting together. So when you go to translate, you have to ask yourself, what is the subject and what is the verb? Everything falls, uh, everything flows from that. So don't get ahead of yourself and say, okay, tota means all, terra means land, uh, video means to see, and posumus means able, so all the land can see. Okay, good, look what I did. Because that is nothing. That's nonsense, okay? That's not what the sentence says. Also, all of the land can see doesn't really make any sense. So we look at the verb. The verb is first person plural. So that tells me my subject in this sentence is we, right? There's no word for we. We are able to see all the land, my dude. We are able, just keep it present tense. We are able to see, you could say all the land, the entire land. There are a couple different ways that you can translate totem. Um, we are able to see all the land or the entire land. Either one works for me, okay? But what you did, Tegan, is you built an English sentence and you saved the land for the end because the land is the direct object. We can see all the land, okay? And that's how you have to approach translation. You can't just smash the meanings together into a sentence. You have to really think about what's going on. It's almost like a puzzle, okay? Magna orbs, right? Magna is in the nominative case. So is herbs, which I gave you guys over there on the side. <clears throat> and the subject cannot be Tyrone because it's accusative. And when we start talking about accusative subjects, that'll be March. We'll preview. Uh, what case are antiquorum and romanorum? I'll throw that to the chat. Antiquorum romanorum. Antiquorum romanorum. Antiquorum romanorum. What case do we think those two words are in? Antiquorum romanorum. Those are in the genitive case. If you remember nothing about the genitive case, okay? Um, add at least one thing to your understanding. And I would rather you learn that it's the of case more than it's possession, right? Yes, the genitive is used for possession, but it can do so many other things. In terms of translation, typically, and I see you, Jaden, Roma est, excellent. Jaden, you're going to tell me why Roma is nominative, even though we already have a nominative? What we call that second nominative? Close enough. <laughs> Predicate nominative. Yep. So it is in the predicate position, which means it's describing the subject. So the subject here is the magna orbs, the great city, the large city. When we have genitives, of is typically the best translation. And since it's plural, all good. I was trying to type predicate and it kept giving me predicative. So it was being weird. Um, the great city, antiquorum aronorum, it's like an apostrophe S, or it's the word of. So how are we going to translate this? The great city... <laughs> or the large city. That would work too. Rome is the great city of the ancient... The Romanorum, because they're genitive plural, <clears throat> that's not ancient Rome. Those are the ancient Romans. So the great city of the ancient Romans. 
is Rome. Or we could do uh, what Jaden did, which is absolutely fine, and you could flip the whole thing around and say Rome is the great city of the ancient Romans. When it's in the predicate position like that, you can kind of interchange them. So whichever you want. But I do want to make a point for my own personal sake. Uh, and that is that Rome is a city. Rome, not Rome was a city. Rome very much is a city. So when you are thinking about these people and you're thinking about this language that they spoke and these buildings that they built, a lot of them are still there, right? It is a, it is a living, breathing city. It has its ancient sections. It has its ruins, um, but it's still Rome. It's still in the same place that it's always been for 2,700 years, which not many cities can claim that, you know, they're that old, particularly in the Western world. Uh, pueri ignawi moere non poterant. So this is one of those classic moments where, nice, okay? You got to be careful with the charts. Because if you are trying to figure out what case Pueri Ignawi is, right, and if you're stuck going down the chart, you're going to hit genitive singular before you're going to hit nominative plural. And it's way more important for a sentence to have a nominative than it is for a sentence to have a genitive. So at the beginning of the sentence like this, Pueri Ignawi, lazy boys, right? My brain is leaning more towards nominative, particularly because my verb here has this ending. It's an NT, right? So my subject is some they, right? They, plural, whoever they are. And so we now know that they are a lazy boys. Uh, moere is my infinitive. And like uh, Tegan said, there's a form of posun. So we have third plural. It's poterant. So this one is past tense. Um, errant is your imperfect. All right, not lazy boys. What do we do with it? The lazy boys were not able to move. Lazy boys were not able to move. Fantastic. And so we translate it exactly right. Subject first, verby stuff, and then anything else that happens to be there. The lazy boys were not able to move. And then finally, Bella Sicilia, or Bella Sicilia, as they say today. Bella Sicilia. You have this word procol. Procol is technically an adverb, just so we know what kind of word it is. What case is this? Ab insula, with a nice long A at the end. What case do we have there? Ab insula Britannia. Beautiful Sicily, bella Sicilia. Sicilia è bella, è un'isola bella. What case is ab insula Britannia? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. You still haven't told me what case it is. Ab insula Britannia. Can't make those A's any longer. Ob takes the ablative. Imagine that. So we got a big old ablative here. Okay, a bunch of words. And then we have our verb is. Okay. So, Bella Sicilia, beautiful Sicily, is Procol Ab. Far away ab insula britannia and i wouldn't say a british island it's not really the adjective that would be britannica it's just the island of britain right? so beautiful sicily is far away from the island 
of Britain. Now I know we say in English the island of Britain, but just because there's an of there doesn't mean it's going to be genitive. Okay, so sometimes English and Latin don't play nice together. But in Sula Britannia, they're both ablative because they're both the same thing. The island is Britain, and Britain is the island. So we don't really need a genitive in there, even though in English we would say the island of Britain. We would say in Sula Sicilia, we would say the island of Sicily, but there'd be no genitive there in Latin. Okay, so sometimes it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, connection. So we have to think about how we say it and how they would say it. <clears throat> all right, let me scroll up a little bit so you guys can see all the sentences together. Do we have any questions for me before I sign off? Tegan and Jaden get the gold star today. Rocking and rolling. I love it. Um, let's see, we might have some lurkers in the chat. We got a couple people in the chat. Uh, there were a bunch of people at the beginning, but I think they probably went and got some lunch. But you guys were awesome. So thank you very much. It's always nice to be able to bounce stuff um, off of you guys when I'm doing this. So I'm going to cut the video here. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I'll see you. I'll see you guys tomorrow.